Sydney um, isn't as challenged um, yet, but we're also seeing some of the you know government rhetoric in there about introducing no grounds evictions and a few of those other things. That's going to put a little bit of a question mark on the sentiment and confidence of someone coming into that Sydney market as well. So both of those markets are challenged by affordability and borrowing power. So when APRA changes that story, those markets will potentially move in a positive direction. And remember, they are the areas that are also most likely the undersupplied city to, to Bryce's earlier point about the positive migration story. Most people pick Melbourne or Sydney um, as their cities in which they want to live in. And so that also underpins that underlying undersupply of demand that we critically need in terms of the dwelling stock to meet the markets. And then you've got regulation changing around trying to restrict the nimbyism in those particular markets as well, which will hopefully then make um, some of the construction and supply side improve a little bit over time. But you'll also start to see that land scarcity, which is what we talk about in terms of longer term capital growth performance. It's all about the land. Make no mistake about it in terms of the value of that land and what what owner occupiers put a price on that and its productive use of that land that is ultimately what uh, what we as investors also look at as well. So if you zoom out to 2030, um, where do you want to hold real estate? Well, we've always yeah. said try and have one in Sydney, try and have one in Melbourne. And if this becomes your opportunity to be able to do that um, and your cash flow allows and your situation allows, who knows, might be the reason for doing it.